Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism of Brawl Sandbox, Incredible Space Program 1.8.1. In a recent live stream, I decided to launch my SLS Wet Workshop, which I introduced in my previous video, and send a Taurus space plane up to it in order to do some more outfitting of it and just check that that was possible. So just as a reminder, the SLS Wet Workshop idea is that we take the core of the space launch system by NASA and take the oxygen tank, turn it into crew quarters or a workshop, and it's wet because it had liquid oxygen in there in the first place, but we're gonna clear all that. Well, there will be gaseous oxygen left over. And then we take the hydrogen tank and use it to fuel a Nerva engine at the bottom. Not a Nerva engine, it's actually a Timberwind, but any sort of nuclear thermal propulsion system that can use the, uh, the hydrogen will do. So here we have the ion propulsion unit in front, that's to make minor corrections and adjustments so that it can station keep for instance. And there go the shuttle mice that carry the RS-25s, which I would recommend but nobody's going to do in real life, but they could carry the engines back. If you have a shuttle, you could carry the engines back too, by the way. Uh, but we don't have a shuttle anymore. So anyway, and the Taurus space plane I don't think can fit the RS-25s inside of it. It is a fully pressurized vessel, there's no cargo hold per se. Uh, there's a cargo area, but that's pressurized, and I don't think it can fit an RS-25 in it. So that's a downside. But anyway, here I am discovering that I only put one solar panel on my power and propulsion element, the ion engine unit that is meant for Lunar Gateway. And it's actually a little bit oversized in this case because the Lunar Gateway one was rather small. Here I am packing the Taurus space plane to deliver some supplies, including pizzas, uh, a water tank, those are the light blue ones, uh, two water tanks, and uh, oxygen tanks, those are the gray ones. And so we just need to get some supplies over to our wet workshop. And I remove the extra seats, there's seating for four in the Taurus space plane, but we only are sending two. And I'm putting a KIS, KIS container with the drills because we're going to be drilling pizzas, basically. Uh, well, we certainly will be drilling the water tank and the oxygen tank. I launch it on a Vulcan rocket, but uh, this first launch during the live stream, it is clear that the Vulcan rocket is very tenuous in its ability to actually launch the Taurus space plane. I check what just exploded, it doesn't really say, but I suspect it's the pizzas flying off because of aerodynamic stress. I'm not sure. They should be shielded inside the plane, but uh, that's always a question mark of how that works in Kerbal. So that's just gonna rip apart, and it wasn't my intention to do an abort scenario right now. So we decided to launch again, and this time I will be more careful. I was trying to do a roll maneuver because the Taurus space plane was sort of sideways, you can see it's sort of sideways, so a roll maneuver would be a good thing to do, but that did not keep it very stable, so this time I didn't do a roll maneuver at all, and it looked like this. So the Taurus space plane should be uh, within the load of the Vulcan rocket, but it does have the wing surfaces and those I did design to retract, but not if they have control surfaces on them, which they do right now, which are necessary for it to come down based on my testing. So yeah, they're all extended and this is very cumbersome for the Vulcan rocket. Here the first stage is completing. Anyway, as long as it's kept very, very close to prograde and there are no such things as wind gusts, it's fine. And the upper stage is underfueled in this case, but I think I underfueled it too much. It's I need to work on what the optimal fueling for the Centaur stage might be. As you can see, it doesn't get the Taurus space plane all the way to orbit, and we need a lot of extra delta V from the space plane, which is already underfueled, in order to complete orbit here. And that does not allow the Taurus space plane to do the inclination correction on its own, which means that our vessel here, with its nuclear engine and hydrogen tank, has to actually do the inclination correction for a Taurus space plane. Otherwise, the Taurus can do the remainder of the maneuvers in order to rendezvous, but it doesn't have enough left in order to return. It can't do re-entry like this, so it'll need some extra fuel here, so we need to optimize it a little bit. It's probable that we can squeeze it out with the, with the Vulcan rocket, but you know, it, it'd be nice if Blue Origin had a new Glen or something. Uh, that would be about the right size for this. 
anyway. So here we are docking, and it's tight fit because of the vertical stabilizers, but thankfully it does actually fit by having the vertical stabilizers go on either side of the PPE, the power and propulsion element in this case. So this is all a pass-through system, system, and so we have our Kerbal. I, I'm in first-person view here with the Kerbal, uh, and uh, that's thanks to Calcam VDS, I think, but I decided that, that eventually is not very useful because we can't access the inventory like that. So since I'm going to need to pull things into inventory, I decided to just stick to third-person view here and continue to float through. So this is now docked to the Harmony-ish module. That is the staging area for outfitting the, the interior of the oxygen tank. Of course, we already have floors in the oxygen tank. I cheated a little bit like that. But, because that would be really hard to bring up in this fashion, or at least would take a lot of part count. I can envision how to do it. It would just be a lot of part count. It's better to have it built in. So, yes, and now we are going inside. Uh, in this case, Bill actually took the hatch pieces off and put the hatches in his inventory. Uh, that was simpler. So you can see, well, uh, one hatch piece there. That was simpler than trying to have it do its animation because the animation hides the hatch really and then it's inaccessible so this is, makes it more accessible so he's just carrying it around along with the uh, that was the oxygen tank that he just placed and now there's a solar panel because we had missed the second solar panel so it is time for Bill to go out and now he grabs the second hatch you can see pulling that in the inventory instead of accessing its animation which would uh, it basically tucks it into the body of the harmony module which then makes it really hard to click on it and close it again so that's why i decided to go with this method of just pulling the hatch pieces off but i discovered that it's hard to put them back on again even though there's a node there in my haste during the live stream, I put the solar panel on the wrong side. You might notice where the other solar panel is at the bottom there. Uh, this solar panel should be going on the opposite side. You can see little RCS thrusters on the power and propulsion element firing to balance the whole thing again after new mass was added. And of course Bill bonks his head <laughs> because that's just how it works. Anyway, very triumphant music as Bill Continues his work. There is more to do here. This is very simple outfitting. Of course, we're just putting tanks and pizzas in. The pizzas are just food containers, okay? Uh, they're just food containers. I tried to put the hatch back on there. That's what I'm doing right now, but it doesn't work. I'll have to see about that. So back into the interior of the Taurus spacecraft. I don't know why the Taurus spacecraft is so well lit, but the interior of the Harmony module is so dark. I haven't put any extra lights on in either one, so... Uh, of course, the Harmony module... The Harmony module textures were pretty light. And they, they were sort of whitish. At least the interior ones. Those were by NASA. So, I don't know why. And the interior here, too, is fairly light, even though it's dark outside. But one thing about it being dark outside is that the reflective textures, like the bottom of the tank here, uh, are just dark they're just black so anyway I attached a water tank or Bill attaches the water tank to the bottom floor of the oxygen I, I guess the habitat area of the wet workshop and back over into the tourist spacecraft honestly this is amusing and a lot of fun for me but I never know if it makes for good viewing I think it's sort of what I wanted, really, <laughs> out of Kerbal. Well, one, one aspect that I wanted out of Kerbal was to be able to... Of course, ha having them not use their jetpacks and, you know, actually manipulating rungs or something like that would be good. Oh, somebody had asked whether I made um, transparent windows. And yes, they can look outside those windows. Those are the stars, though. There's no... Um, right now, it's nighttime around Earth, and we're not facing the Earth. So I just wanted to verify that with with Bill there and we place the second water tank though not very well I could have rotated that and we place the second air tank or oxygen tank actually oxygen tank we probably need some nitrogen if especially if we we're gonna use Kerbalism with this we would need nitrogen 
And basically Bill is out of EVA propellant. That's another thing we could bring tanks of. So it is Jeb's turn and Jeb's job is to deal with the pizzas. And yep, here we go. Uh, the interior of the Taurus spacecraft cockpit is not supposed to look like that. It's only because it's dark. And once we get into daylight, uh, you'll see it looks different. And I don't know exactly why, probably because of some reflectivity. It turns out that I can't grab a whole stack of pizzas, so it has to be one at a time. That's a downside to uh, the pizza thing. But actually, the pizzas are not meant to be the main food storage element here. Uh, what we would like is a uh, actually cheese, flour in rather large batches, and really humongous pepperonis, maybe a bundle of pepperonis, and deliver those and then have like an oven that converts cheese, flour, and pepperoni into pizzas would be the ideal situation. And well, not pizzas, food, right? I mean, the pizzas are just a food container anyway. I have plans. So anyway, and then you know, once, once you have uh, those elements, you could make all sorts of things. I mean, cheese and flour could turn into pasta of some kind. Anyway, it turns out that I can't surface attach the pizzas, so for now I just stack them back over here. But notice how the stack, when I restack them, is sort of curved. It's not stacked the way the stack in the VAB that I had stacked in the VAB is. And that may give you a hint why you get the Kraken sometimes, because uh, things in space don't quite line up right. And our stacking here, it was supposed to be just attaching to the node, so there's no excuse here. But uh, it's inaccurate when it does that, and so yeah. Yep, watch out for that sort of thing. But here we are in daylight, I'm just taking a look around, and I then realize that the solar panel is on the wrong side. And there's Earth outside the window, and this is how the cockpit actually should look like, and for some reason only looks like in daylight. And Jeb goes out to fix the solar panel. Which, honestly, I'm actually delighted to do in daylight because it'll look better. So, actually you can see, because uh, we left the hatch off of the Harmony module on the opposite side, that it is facing the oceans of the Earth already. That's the blue. So, out goes Jeb. Uncut. Uncut egress through the Harmony module. And there we go. During the live stream, uh, as we look back on the ship as it were, I said something to the effect of, take that, stock players. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you know, I might get fewer frame rates, but I'll take uh, one of my frames over 10 of yours. <laughs> anyway, a little bit of friendly rivalry there. But here we go. We are just going to remove that solar panel and it'll be super easy. Yeah, thankfully the solar panels, I had increased the volume of the Kerbal's KIS inventory from the get-go. And the solar panels in general are not that heavy. So, not a big problem to move them. Yes, the power and propulsion element is supposed to look like that. It has MLI layers on it. That's what causes the crinkle. So, that's how it basically would look, in theory. I don't know if it's silver or gold foil, though. Okay, and again, that's not structural foil, that's insulation foil. Okay, so Jeb is done, and I don't bring the Taurus space plane back down during this live stream, of course, because it doesn't have the fuel to do it. So we're going to have to do other stuff. This is just a test of the whole system, but I need to refine a lot of things, including making maybe custom water and oxygen tanks. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.